Good afternoon. It's Brian with the Barbell Spin. Um, last night, the individual quarterfinals leaderboard was finalized, and upon doing so, CrossFit released the updated worldwide rankings, which then also determines how many athletes end up going to the CrossFit games from each semifinal. So we're going to take a look at what the re what the worldwide rankings look like, what changed, who went out, um, who's now in, and then what that means for each semifinal, uh, and who how many spots are going to go from each semifinal from North America, East, West, Europe, etc. So let's take a look at it right now. All right, we're going to start with the women's worldwide rankings, um, and the Number one thing you'll see is that Tia Claire Toomey is not number one. So she competed in the open. She did well. She finished in uh, the top 10% in Oceana, but she did not pay the $50 to do the registration, uh, to register for the quarterfinals. And even though she did the workouts, she did not do, she did not register. So she was not an official quarterfinal athlete. Because of that, she is no longer on the rankings. She actually had enough points. She was at almost 34,000, the max points. Um, but she, uh, because she wasn't on there, she's no longer, she was completely wiped off the worldwide rankings. She would have been number one had she paid the $50, but she did not. Um, What's interesting about this is that they did add uh, a column here for how the athletes moved up and down. As you see, there's a whole lot of green. Most of those are coming from Tia not being around. Um, another thing is you'll, uh, when an athlete does not compete, they're taken off. So Kara Saunders and others who did not compete in individual quarterfinals this year are no longer on the list even if they would have had enough points to still be ranked. So, you know, you scroll through here, you do see Annie Thoris' daughter. So what they're comparing here is against what was originally published before the start of the season. Um, Annie Thoris' daughter, because she did not compete in quarterfinals, individual quarterfinals last year, she was not on this. So you see that there's uh, three zeros here from last year's quarterfinals, semifinals, and games on the individual side. Uh, continuing down, I mean, again, you don't see any athletes actually losing spots because the open and the quarterfinals, really everybody's getting the same amount of points for the most part. Um, you'll see the open, everybody's getting 990 points in, in this uh, 20 grouping of 20 athletes. Uh, the quarterfinals does have a little bit of a difference, but again, the top athletes are getting 1,980 points. Some of the lower ones are getting 1,940. There's not a big discrepancy of what's happening. So what we saw before is pretty much the same, except for it's just taking out those who did not compete this year for the most part, or adding those in who are now competing. Um, again, you'll see how the athletes have, have jumped in. So Hadi Kanyo now is in there, and then you get down to the top 100. And a lot of these athletes were outside the top 100 on this page. As you see, they did not uh, make it to semifinals two years ago, but they've been competing the last two years, and now they've had enough points. They've, they're the ones that backfilled those who did not compete this year. On the men's side, what's interesting about this is the top 14 athletes didn't change. They're 1 through 14 before, and they're 1 through 14 again. Not one person moved up or down one spot. Uh, the first time you see any movement is here in 15th, where Samuel Quant moved up a spot. I'll get into that later, but it was Travis Mayer, who was in 15th because of an injury. He wasn't competing this year, so he's off the leaderboard. Um, going through, you see Tim Paulson here. Um, he is one of the only athletes that's actually read on this that went down. The reason being is he did pay the $50 registration fee to compete uh, in quarterfinals as an individual, even though he's going on team with Proven. So he'll be on the leaderboard on the Proven team this weekend. But he paid the $50 uh, 
he did the workouts, but he did not submit his scores. So he got 100 points just for doing it. It left him on the leaderboard um, in the rankings, but doesn't really uh, impact too much. Even not, not even doing the quarterfinals only drops in 12th place, 12 points. So it is what that is. Um, again, going through, you know, you even have people like Ben Smith didn't finish the quarterfinals, just did a few of the workouts, couldn't do um, the lunges. Still ends up with 1,720 points from this year's quarterfinals. Still adds eight places to his worldwide ranking, even though he's not, you know, he wouldn't even have qualified for um, semifinals this year, but he gets in there. Um, going through, Sam Cornwaye is the only athlete who is now new into the top 100 on the men's side. Um, like Annie, he went team last year, and so you see the three zeros in quarterfinals, semifinals in the games, but he was at the games the prior year. So that gave him enough points to stay in, and then you get to the top 100. And just like the women, most of these athletes who are now bumping into the top 100 are taking advantage of those who went team uh, this year, did not compete, you know, were hurt, et cetera. And so these athletes are the ones who – probably didn't make it last two years ago. They're on just on the outside. And now with two full years of competition, even though it's not semifinals and games, it has enough to make it into the top 100. So why is this important? The top 100, there's, there's 300 athletes in semifinals, but the top 100 is what CrossFit uses for the DeHunt method to determine how many game spots are going to each region and so you know we had talked about this in the past the open and the quarterfinals the point spreads isn't that different but it does allow athletes on that fringe to now move up as athletes are rolled off um so let's take a look right now at who is now no longer on the leaderboard and why so going through here Obviously, I've already talked about Tia Claire Toomey. Uh, Haley Adams, she's taken a year off, again, because she didn't compete this year. She's no longer on the list. Kara Saunders, Christy O'Connell, also both athletes who are not competing this year. Um, you know, Soon-Yoin Choi uh, and Lucy Campbell are both injured. Sam Briggs is no longer competing. So, again, these athletes aren't aren't on the leaderboard, they're not competing in quarterfinals, so they're just completely stripped of their points and taken off the leaderboard. Then you have a few teams athletes like Kelly Stone um, and then others, uh, you know, Leah Irons, Amy Morton, uh, Olivia Sulek stepping away. So, you know, all of these in red that you see in this left column, these were the top 100 athletes on the initial worldwide rankings. And because they did not register for quarterfinals or did not compete this year, they're no longer on there. Versus you see on the right, there again, very few additions. Annie Thor's daughter here is the first one that is now new and moves up the leaderboard significantly, who was not in the top 100 before the game, before the open. Sarah Sigmund, Sigmund's daughter moved up quite a few points. Uh, again, coming back from injury in 2021, where she did not have a lot of points. Uh, Jesse Smith. So this one, it says plus nine. That's added to uh, her ranking. But you'll see in 67th place, that's not where she was. When CrossFit did the initial rankings, Jesse actually had two profiles in, uh, in the game's site. Because when she got married, she didn't have an old email address. CrossFit told her to create a second account. When you do that second account, now she looks like she's two athletes in the database. And when they ran the numbers, they didn't see that or notice it. And Jesse was way down on the leaderboard. They had since corrected it. I don't think they put a new, uh, a new rankings out. But she would have been about 67th place when both of those had been combined over the past two seasons. So you see that she did move up. Um, I, I showed it because now North America West, it does add to an athlete in the top 100 because of that correction from what was originally published. 
Um, and then you see, again, all of these athletes here, um, all of those athletes were not in the top 100 in the original publication. They are now, and now they, it, it does move the top 100, the, the allocation of spots just a little bit, uh, which we'll get into for a bit. Uh, a couple comments here, Renata. Did Tia make a mistake by not registering for quarterfinals? So yes and no. Um, at the end of the day, it's not going to make a difference whether she did or not. Um, the reason being is if we go into all quarterfinals and look through the athletes, and, and we'll get into the DeHaunt method in a minute, the women at Oceana only have three women in the top 100 because now T is no longer in there. Kara Saunders is no longer in there. Um, Jamie Simmons right here. She was way out because of injury in 2021 with an open and a quarterfinal performance this year. She did jump up. You see 931 spots just outside the top 100. So, as we were entering in the quarterfinals, we weren't, I wasn't sure where she was going to end up. I knew it was going to be close into the top 100. If Jamie had actually been able to bump up into the top 100, that would have given Oceana four athletes in the top 100. And if Tia had paid for the $50, that would have given them five spots. And as you'll see in the DeHaunt method calculations in a minute, that would have added actually a fourth qualification spot into Oceana. But given that Jamie just fell short of that, it's not going to really matter. They only have three in the top 100 and you needed five to get there. So, you know, other than maybe bragging rights that Tia could have said that she was in, you know, number one in the, in the, in the world for so many, uh, you know, consecutive publications, it, it it's really not going to make much of a difference yet. And when, if she comes back next year, which we'd expect she does, she'll be added right back the minute that she makes it and pays for quarterfinals next year. Um, soccer mom, what happens when the dropped athlete comes back next season? So just like what happened with Annie or San Cornoyer, the minute that they pay for quarterfinals in next year in 2024, they're now eligible to be right back into it. So whether it was injury, whether they went team, uh, whether they just didn't compete this year, you'll see something like this where the prior um, quarterfinals, semifinals and games will say all zeros, but they'll come back in and get another, you know, say 990 points and 1980 for quarterfinals and they'll be right back into it. So if Tia comes back, and she does well in the open in quarterfinals, just like you'd expect. Um, you know, she's going to have three zeros on there. She'll be higher than where Andy was because of the game's win. She'd get 10,000 points instead of four. Um, so, you know, add another six to this. She'd be at 17,000. She'd be way up there, but she won't be number one again. So it's, uh, you know, the, the whole point of this method is you need to be in the top 100 to potentially get your team or your, your region uh, an additional spot to qualify to the games. And yep, I have no idea how to pronounce her name. AOE work, no idea. But uh, yes, top 100. Um, all right. So, and then if we go to the men's side, uh, here we go. As you see here, really no changes to the point structure. Um, Travis Mayer was that first athlete who um, drops off the top 100 because of injury. If Andre Hude, Royce Dunn um, going team, so they didn't pay the 50 bucks to do the individual side of things. Adrian Munweiler, I believe has an injury. Um, Scott Panchik, Baden Brown, Sam Stewart. Uh, you know, so the list goes on here. I mean, in total, there were 21 women and 22 men who did not compete, who were in the top 100 um, that are now taken off and replaced by new athletes, whether it's like an Andy Thoris daughter or Sam Cornway, who didn't compete last year, or those who have been competing, but now have enough points because those athletes were taken off the leaderboard. Um, and again, you see down here, the top set, the last 17 athletes are all athletes who 
we're sitting pretty much just outside that list and have been able to jump back up um, because of those athletes who are no longer on there. All right. So that is kind of who came on, who came off. Most of these are all going to be because of injuries um, or, or retiring, et cetera. So now that we have a top 100, what CrossFit does and how they're going to get to the number of qualifying spots is they're going to do a thing called the DeHaunt method based off of the top 100 in the worldwide rankings. And they put out this article yesterday, they had everything ready. And so again, there's 40 spots, 40 men, 40 women who will go to the games. They guaranteed this column here. So one from Africa, two from Asia, three from Oceania, two from South America, and five each from Europe, North America East, and North America West. That left 17 unallocated spots to be distributed to the remaining, uh, to, to those regions based off of how the top 100 was made up of those athletes. And what you'll see is of those 17, for the women, six went to Europe, six went to North America East, and five went to North America West. So 11 women from Europe out of the European semifinal will go to the game. So the top 11, top 11 women in the set, from the North America East semifinal will also go, and the top 10 from North America West will go. All those four smaller regions did not get one additional spot. So if you think about 40 spots and how they took away 17 qualifying spots to leave them unallocated. They took those away from Europe and North America, and they took away the two last chance qualifiers, ran all these calculations and did everything back. And they all went back to Europe and North America, just like they were before. That's where the, the last chance qualifiers went um, between North America and Europe. So what you see is really not a whole lot changed. Um, on the men's side, it's a little bit different. You got six additional spots from Europe, seven in North America East, and four in North America West. So in total, North America will now send 21. It's exactly what they sent last year. And, um, and then Europe will also get 11. The one difference is North America West only gets nine. Um, whereas you kind of thought it might be 10 and 10 when it started. Um, so when you think about the calculations, um, and I did a, a video a month or two ago about how Africa could never send another game, another spot or get another spot to the games. They'll always stuck, be stuck with one. And that's because you need five athletes in the top 100 to make it there. And it happened in the men's and it happened in the women's that both needed exactly five to get that last final unallocated qualifying spot. And if you look at these four smaller regions, the women are actually the closest. They had four uh, athletes in the top 100 and they, the way that the points are going to happen with semifinals is there are going to be athletes and women in the top 100 now who can't get enough points, even if they get second or third in their region, in their semifinal, they're going to get leapfrogged by athletes who are outside the top 100 who are competing in semifinals. And so that number of four is going to go down. So, um, you know, it, it's what we're going to see here is most likely as the years go by, based on this calculation, you're going to see the athletes in North America and Europe continue to get potentially more and more spots outside of Oceania, where Atia, Akira, um, and Jamie Simmons can all add to that, where they might be able to start eating away and giving Oceania a few more spots in the future. But overall, you're going to see a majority of these unallocated spots year after year going to North America and Europe because of the point structure assigned to the semifinals. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see how all of this plays out. Again, there's going to be 300 total athletes, men and women each, um, that will be competing in a semifinal. Only 100 of those are in the top 100 of the world are then 
calculating this uh, allocation for the spots. So, you know, there are athletes who are likely going to be outside the top 100 who could earn a, a spot into the games and really leapfrog way up from the leaderboard or the worldwide rankings outside the top 100 and with a good game showing could be in the top 20, um, top 50 easily. So um, there will be a lot more shakeups after semifinals and definitely after the games to the worldwide rankings. But right now, what we've seen in the first two stages does not make much of a difference. So um, Wad Zombie, will I be at the North America West semifinal? I don't think so. Um, we'll see, but uh, it's gonna be a pretty tight turnaround to, to get there. So. Um, if nothing else, I'll still be doing all the coverage, um, trying to get athlete interviews, um, you know, from the comfort of, of the live stream. So stay tuned, but, uh, right now it doesn't look like I'll be able to make it out to California. So, um, really that's, that's where we are today. Um, you know, again, we're going to see North America East get 12, Europe get 11 and, and North America West get nine um on the men's side and then on the women's side uh, you'll see 11 come from north america east and 11 from europe and 10 from north america west so all that thing that we've done with the worldwide rankings it's really not changing the makeup of the games too much um, but it, it does have a few minor impacts on north america east versus north america west so uh hopefully that kind of clears up what's happened over the last uh, night or so, um, we'll, we'll monitor the, the team's quarterfinals and the age groups this weekend, um, and go from there. They don't, they're not applied to this, uh, worldwide ranking. So not as confusing a set number of spots for those guys, but right now, these are the numbers you need to keep in mind when you're watching the semifinals in a couple months, because the top athlete, the top 11, say in North America East at the North America East semifinal in Orlando, those top 11 will be the ones heading to the games in August. So thanks a lot, guys. Um, make sure to follow the Barbell Spin on Instagram. Like and subscribe here so you know that when I do go live, you can get that notification. And uh, we'll see you next time.